Fifth grade Go Math, Chapter 4, Lesson 3, Essential Question. How can you use drawings and place value to multiply a decimal and a whole number? Unlock the problem. In 2010, the United States Mint released a newly designed Lincoln Penny. A Lincoln Penny has a mass of 2 and 5 tenths grams. If there are 5 Lincoln Pennies on a tray, what is the total mass of the pennies? Squiggle underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. Also, underline any keywords for what operation we will be doing. So you should have squiggle underlined what is the total mass of the pennies. Um, circled 2 and 5 tenths grams and then circled 5. Uh, I used a different color because they're on top of each other um, for underlining total. That tells us that we are always going to be adding um, or multiplying. And since these are equal groups, we are going to be multiplying. Also, um, some people automatically go to the numbers. Um, we don't need to know anything about 2010. This is just extra information that has nothing to do with our answer. All right, so fill in this blue box to the right based on what you've underlined and circled. So we have our mass, which is 2 and 5 tenths grams, and then our pennies, which there's five of them. And so that means it's five groups of what? Five groups of 2 and 5 tenths grams. So now that's our multiplication sentence um, of multiplying. It's 5 times 2 and 5 tenths. So as we work through our problem, um, we have our quick drawing here, which all it's going to be showing is what we're going to do with our numbers and digits over here. So the first step is to estimate. Estimate the product by rounding the decimal to the nearest whole number. So we have 2 and 5 tenths rounding to the nearest whole number. We circle the 2, underline the 5. The 5 tells us to increase to the next. So we are rounding up to 3, which is 15. 5 times 3 is 15. And now we're going to do our first step, which is to multiply the tenths. And notice they just set it up like a normal multiplication problem. Generally, you just put the number with the most digits on top. So multiplying our tenths, we have 5 groups of 5 tenths. 5 times 5 is 25 tenths, or 2 and um, 5 tenths but we just write it down like this. We are going to be doing more of a partial products uh, method. And so we're writing two ones and five tenths. And I'm writing it that way because we can see in our picture that we have two sets of ten, which regroup to ones, and then we'll have five left over. And next step is to multiply the ones by five. Um, so two ones times five. Five times two is ten ones. Now again we got to keep the place value in line so ten ones. There's no decimals so I'm leaving that alone. And next is to add them all together. So we're adding our partial products and if we add Five and nothing. Bring down our decimal. Uh, two and zero is two and the one. So five Lincoln pennies have the total mass of 12 and five grams. Five tenths grams. Sorry. Now one thing that I want you to notice right now is how many decimals are in our multiplication problem. There is only one decimal place in our problem and we have one decimal place in our answer. And how um, do we know, that, how does our estimate help us determine if um, this is reasonable? Does it make sense? Well, that would round up to 13 which is close to 15 so we know that we're not way off. That's how the estimate helps. Another way to multiply a decimal by a whole number is to use place value patterns. Uh, place value patterns we practiced in lesson um, 
1 of chapter 4. So, having a thickness of 1 and 35 hundredths millimeters, the dime is the thinnest coin produced by the United States Mint. If you stack 8 dimes, what would the total thickness of be the total thickness of the stack? Well, we're wanting to know the total thickness of the stack of 8 dimes that have 1 and 35 hundredths millimeters. So that's how we came up with 8 times 1 and 35. Now the first thing that we would do is we would write the decimal factor as a whole number. So they want it to come to 135. So they want us to take the decimal out. But you can't just take a decimal out. You have to understand how to do that and um, why it works. So remember in our placement pat our place value patterns that when we multiply by 100, we move the decimal right two places. And so that's what they did. They moved the decimal right two places so because they multiplied it times 100. And we can do this um, because we're going to undo it in a few moments. So then the next step is just to multiply like whole numbers, okay? So here's where they took the 1 and 35 hundredths and multiplied it times 100 and moved the decimal right here. And then they multiplied it times 8. 8 times 5 is 40. You have your 0. You regroup. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. 8 times 1 is 8. Um, plus 2 is 10. So that's where we are right now. And the decimal would be right there. But we need to move the decimal back um, two places. Because we moved it two places here, we need to move it back to the left now. And so we think of 1 one hundredth of 135 being what we started with. So we multiply it times a decimal, which moves our decimal point back two places. So our actual answer is 10 and 80 hundredths. Again, I want you to take notice that um, we have two decimal places in the multiplication problem and then two decimal places in our answer. Now, noticing that there's two in our problem and two in our answer, there's a shortcut that um, a lot of people do when multiplying a decimal times a whole number. And this strategy is the reason why that shortcut works. Because we multiplied times 100 to move um, the decimal, and then we undid what we did to place the decimal back. But that's the reason why counting decimal places and making sure you have that many in your answer, that's why that shortcut works. Um, but to actually answer our question, a stack of 15 dimes would have the thickness of, and then our answer was 10 and 80 hundredths millimeters. So now looking at number one, how, um, explain how you know the product of 8 times 1 and 35 hundredths is greater than 8. Why do we know that this is going to be larger than 8? Thinking back on just basic multiplication um, facts that I know, I know that 8 times 1 equals 8. And I know that 1 and 35 hundredths is blank than 1. We know that 1 and 35 hundredths is greater than 1. Therefore, my product or my answer multiplying 1 and 35 hundredths is going to be greater than 8. So looking because of that, let's look at number 2. What if you multiplied 35 hundredths by 8? Um, would the product be less than or greater than 8? What do you think? It will be less because, how do you know? Because 35 hundredths is less than 1. And if 8 times 1 is 8, anything less than 1 is going to be less than 8 when multiplied. 
So looking at your share and show, um, numbers one, two, and three, they've already done all the multiplication for you. All they want you to do is place the decimal point in the product. So um, you need to think. So for number one, the place value of the decimal factor is the hundredths. Um, so how many decimals should be in your answer because you're multiplying um, times a decimal with hundredths. And then place the decimal point in all of them. And make sure I can see it. Don't just do a little tiny dot. Make sure that it can be seen. And then on numbers 4, 5, and 6, you're going to multi multiply them out. You can do the partial products method, or you can do um, the example of moving the decimal out and then moving the decimal in. Um, either method is fine. Um, just make sure that you double check your answers. And if you made a mistake, um, make sure that you understand why you made that mistake. And you may go ahead and press pause and get to work. So for number one, there are two decimal places um, in the problem. So you should have two decimal places in your answers. Number two... Um, 3 and 7 tenths times 2, there is one decimal place in your problem. Therefore, you should have one decimal place in your answer, so it should be 7 and 4 tenths. And number 3, 19 and 34 hundredths times 5. Um, there are two decimal places in your problem. Therefore, you should have two decimal places in your answer. So your answer should be 96 and 70 hundredths. And moving on to numbers 4. So I'm going to show the partial products method first. Um, 3 times 2 is 6 hundredths. And then 3 times 3 is 9 tenths. And then 3, and I'm just keeping my decimal lined up, 3 um, times 6 is 18, and then I would bring all that down. Okay, so even no matter what method you did, you should end up with 18 and 96 hundredths. Now for number 5 and 6, I'm going to use um, my favorite method, which is I'm going to pull the decimal to the right out, and then I'll put it back in w with my answer. So I'm going to go 8 times 5 is 40, and then 8 times 4 is 32, plus 4 is 36, and I need to have one decimal, there's one decimal place there, so I need one decimal place in my answer. So I could write it like that, or because there are n no actual digits except for a zero, it's just 36. And then number 6, um, again, I'm going to move the decimal out, pretend it's not there, and then just move it in for my answer. Um, 7 times 5 is 35. Uh, 5 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. And 5 times 4 is 20. Um, I have one decimal place in my um, problem, so I need one decimal place in my answer. So it is 203 and 5 tenths. And math talk, how can I determine if my answer in 6 is reasonable? Well, if I go 40, I'm going to go 40 times 5, and that is 40 times 5, um, so that's 20, adding my 0 is close to 200. 203 and 5 tenths is close to 200, so it is good.